It is 8pm at the moment and we have a miracle. Yesterday at this time it was overcast and I counted 12 jets pouring out their venom in a few minutes. This morning was the same as we walked to the town centre for breakfast around 9am. At 8pm I set my astronomy program for Steckborn, Switzerland and it places Saturn and Virgo south just above the horizon. We looked at the moon and Saturn and they were directly overhead. We set the location of Steckborn south to 13 degrees south of the equator, central Angola, Africa, the same longitude. And visually, the moon and Saturn were overhead when the astronomy program indicated what the sky is above Angola. As the new axis is Hern Bay, England, its latitude, 51 degrees, 52 minutes, 9.49 seconds, we have to set the computer over our location. The distance the axis shift has moved by the same, approximately 53 degrees, at around 13 degrees south latitude, to get some idea what we can expect to see at midnight. The computer has Virgo, the Virgin, and Saturn with the Moon at an altitude of 66.07 degrees. Last night the sky was clear, although light from another source made it difficult to see all of Virgo, but the moon and Saturn were clearly seen. This proved that tilt had moved the North Pole axis to Hern Bay, England. Therefore, the two latitudes indicated the shift of 52.949. So, for our observation, it was as if we were in central Angola before the axis shifted. The astronomy program is not connected to the internet and cannot be altered and proves the shift and is now here in Steckborn being 13 degrees south of the equator as far as the astronomy software is concerned. Measuring the moon where it should be, altitude 36.25 and where it actually is, 64.98, is a shift of 28.73. 64.98 minus 36.25 is 28.73 and in Hebrew this number is tokbach, a primitive root to slaughter animals or men, kill, make, slaughter, slay. My math after several various approaches I calculate the Earth's tilt at 17.18 degrees, a decrease of 6.22 degrees. Greek Dictionary 622 means to destroy, literally or figuratively, destroy, die, lose, mar, perish. So this would cause cooler weather if that was the former North Pole axis, except for the fact the axis is now in Hern Bay, England, at 51.23 degrees off the previous North axis. So at the 23.4 degree normal tilt and then at 17.818 degrees tilt, 6.22 degrees difference from normal, it means danger. So the 23.24 minus the 6.22 degrees um, equals 17.18 so it's less of a tilt and that's a huge amount causing the temperature to rise substantially because it's bringing England up it's bringing Europe up to face squarely the sun at 92 million miles on January the 4th so it's facing squarely the sun rather than uh, on an angle so in Greek that number is to disclose in person with words, declare plainly, inform, manifest, show, signify in person and that's exactly what we're doing. This shift will cause massive fires, drought, cyclones, earthquakes, high tides, volcanoes. The only alternative is to accept that Jesus Christ is back and end it all and it's your call. It leads into... Psalm 37.14 The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. 
A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. On August the 8th, 1769, Lieutenant Cook, sailing from Antarctica, recorded the first sighting of a comet by a white man in the South Pacific. That was August the 8th. Add 88,888 days, and it was my 69th birthday, January the 11th, 2013. On the same date this year, the distance to Pluto that's August the 8th, 2013, the distance to Pluto will be 31.68 astronomical units. Pope Benedict XVI will be 31680 days old on my 70th birth date, January the 11th, 2014. Lord Jesus Christ total 3168 in Greek gematria and I will be 69.6 years old on August the 8th. And that number 696 in Greek is a silver coin. Now my ancestor King William I the Lion of Scotland owned a silver mine in Alston, Scotland. He minted the first silver coin. He built Stirling Castle and financed the Benedictine monks to build Arbroath Monastery. And that's the tie to Benedict XVI who named himself after Saint Benedict and the order of the monks that observed the Benedictine rule. The term sterling silver is derived from my ancestor. He built more than a dozen monasteries dedicated to me, his descendant, Jesus. And here is the silver coin struck with the likeness, as primitive as it looks, uh, the profile of King William I, the Lion of Scotland. As I pointed out to Yah, he has the same moustache. My birth year of 1944, less 1178 is 766, which is Ash in Hebrew, that is Asherah. Or 2014 less 1178 is 836, is Asher from Happy, 833, Asher, blessed and happy. These are the uh, documented writings about Arboros, the story it tells, it's being built by King William I, Scotland, and his installation of the Benedictine monks to run the monastery, and indeed it was from their labour. He financed everything, one of more than a dozen monasteries that he built. This is uh, the remains of Arboros at the left and it amazed me how dumb the English are to actually try and remove my ancestor from not only English records but from Scotland as well. He built so much of Scotland due to the vast sums of money he derived from the silver mines. Even the castle he built and died in, Stirling Castle, yet there is no mention of him. Only a statue of Robert Bruce, the traitor to Scotland, stands at the entrance to my ancestor's castle.
This is the stone commemorating uh, the inter where William is buried in the ground of Arborworth Abbey. His length of reign from 19, sorry, 1165 to 1214. Now, that's actually not right either, is it? Um, his death date was actually 1215, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's been altered. Yes, his, his birth date was 12th of uh, December the 4th, 1143, and he died on the same day in 1215. Mm, 72. 72 years old, yeah. Being so altered. Mm. Mm. Where Anna comes in. Right. And what's interesting, because this is recording, so your words have been recorded, oh, which is good. good. Yeah. Um, but what is interesting is that he wasn't buried at Stirling Castle. But no. by road, it was 78 miles that we travelled yeah. from Stirling Castle to Arbroath. And so they travelled with his body yeah. to, to be interred at the Abbey, obviously, because that's where he felt closer to God. Yeah. That's where his heart was, must have been his desire to be buried there. Yeah. 